Hey folks, welcome back to Learn From Dad. I'm James, I'm here tonight out in the garage. I wanna to talk to you about forces. And I'm not talking Star Wars, I'm talking things to do with mechanical things. Things that as we start discussing nuts and bolts and hardware and screws and how to change a tire, we're gonna start talking about forces, specifically shear, compression, and tension. And we wanna make sure that these foundational things are understood, otherwise other things down the road won't make any sense. So let's jump in and get started. So first let's take a look at tension. Sometimes you'll hear it referred to as tensile, but tension and compression. Tension and compression always work together. And we'll use an example of a bolt here, and we're just gonna draw on the bench. So when we talk about compression, compression is forces that are going the same direction, compressing something. Pretty simple, you think about a baker who's kneading dough, they're compressing the dough, they're pushing it together. And opposing that is tension, which is forces that are pulling away from each other, again, in the same plane. Now the reason these two forces work together all the time is I can't have tension without compression and I can't have compression without tension. So if I had, for example, something in between here, as I tightened that bolt up and I squeezed that item with the bolt, that bolt itself is actually under tension pulling outward against the threads, the head of the bolt and the nut. So there's my tension at the same time that I'm compressing something. Now shear, we can use the bolt as the same example because you may come across a piece of farm equipment, for example, that has a shear bolt to protect some mechanical device. And shear is forces that aren't going in, for example, the, the, the linear plane of the bolt, but across the bolt and in opposite directions. So for example, if I had a bolt and it was acting in a shear force, or if there was a shear force acting on the bolt, I would have one force acting this direction and one force acting this direction. So opposing each other, trying to slice that item in half. Now, another good example to kind of put these into real world uh, situations. So I've got a re receiver hitch that's off of my truck. It's actually uh, an, an insert and then the physical receiver itself. So if we think about how a receiver hitch works with a trailer and all the elements involved with it. So first I slide the receiver into the insert and I put the pin in, okay? Now we'll come back to this in just a moment. At the back, I've got the actual hitch ball and as I put the hitch ball on and I tighten the nut on the bottom, ultimately what I'm doing is I am compressing the steel of the hitch which in turn, the opposing forces is causing a tension between the bottom plate of the hitch ball and the nut that's on the bottom and the threads that are on the, the ball shank itself. So here, in general, I've got a tension and compression situation at this moment in time without pulling. Now, once I apply the hitch, not only do I have those forces in the tension and compression, but I'm also starting to add a a different dimension of pulling rearward on this. So I do have a shearing force that is attempting to shear the shank of that hitch ball. Now, assuming that it's sized properly and it's not overloaded, you're not ever going to shear it because it's designed for that. However, that is the force that is attempting to act back there. Tension and compression and shear at the same time. Now another example of shear is actually back up here where the receiver slid into the insert. So if you think about, there's no tension or compression back here. It's just a loose pin that gets installed. You know, you're gonna drop your cotter pin in, but this is meant to be a loose joint. So when you're pulling down the road and I'm pulling in these opposing directions, I'm actually, uh, I'm actually putting tension force, but if you think about in this case, the tension force is acting on the edges of that pin, really it's on the inside here, and that's the, sh the shearing force. So if this wasn't strong enough, for example, 
let's say you lost the pin and you grabbed the cheapest bolt you could find and you stuck it in there and you went and pulled a very heavy load, it's probably going to break. And what's going to happen is you're going to shear it at those edges. So that's a shear force taking place. Whereas in the back here, we've got that tension and compression coupled with while I'm pulling, I've also got a shearing action back here. So let's take a look at one more example here in my garage, just so that we can see another real world situation with some screws and some shelves and how that looks. So here you go, another random example of some shelves that I built with some hooks just to hang up various rigging and things that I use on my farm or in other applications. So a couple different situations here. One, I've got all these hooks that are screwed into the boards. And so with all this stuff hanging on it, what kind of force am I putting on that? Well, I'm putting tension on that. I'm, I'm pulling and the compression of those threads inside the board allows it to stay put and I'm putting a tension or a tensile force on that. Now, similarly, if you think about the screws, as I put these screws into the board, what's it do to the metal bracket? It compresses it. So while I compress that metal bracket, I'm actually putting tension on that screw because of the threads of the screw are allowing it to essentially pull in this direction while I'm compressing that metal. And similarly back here in the back where the brackets are fastened to the wall, I'm screwed into the wall, into the stud behind here, and that is doing a compression against the bracket and at the same time, of course, the tensile force because they have to always oppose each other. And if you think about the shelf, to some extent there's a little bit of shear force, especially if I set a really heavy, heavy, heavy weight in the back, I would have more of a shearing force that's trying to slide down on those screws. But in reality, most of my weight is actually far out here on the shelf. So the shelf is actually more wanting to physically rotate. So there's far more tension and compression back here on this screw, for example, than there is a shear force. But there's another example of just how tension and compression work together and the shear force is the opposing of two across a, a plane of a piece of hardware. So there you have it. Now we've explored tension and compression and shear forces, and hopefully you have a better understanding of why they matter. And now as we start talking about other elements, whether it's changing a tire or hanging up a shelf, you can appreciate what those terms mean and better utilize them in your day-to-day -day life. So thanks for checking in. Come back for the next video. Hope to see you there.